Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today I just want to share my experience of sailing on Holland America to Alaska, just tell you what it was like on the ship, tell you what embarkation was like, and what I found really helpful, and whether or not I recommend sailing to Alaska on Holland America. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of our Let's Go family members, and a big welcome to everyone who is new. If any of you haven't subscribed yet, we would sure appreciate it if you would please subscribe to our channel and I, it will really help us out and I think it will be a really good thing in your life as far as planning and having a wonderful community to talk about cruising and ask questions and give help as well. So first of all, today I am going to talk about, like I said, my experience sailing on Holland America. I'm not going to compare it to anything else. The only other cruise line that I have sailed on to Alaska is Princess, but I do want to just really share what my experience is. And I will start off telling you immediately, I absolutely recommend sailing to Alaska on Holland America. If anything happens and you can't go on Holland America, go on Princess and I will tell you, I'll just tell you why now. Because as I, I think I maybe mentioned in one of my videos on board, Holland America and Princess have the most permits to go to Glacier Bay. At some point, you need to go to Glacier Bay. Glacier Bay is remarkable. The rest of Alaska that you get to see from a cruise ship is amazing as well. There are beautiful glaciers like the Hubbard and the Cot Arm, um, going up Tracy Fjord to see the Sawyer Glacier. All these other things are amazing, but there is nowhere on earth like Glacier Bay. And so if you want to get to go, for sure, pick one of the cruises that goes there. Most, most of the cruises with Princess and Holland America, most of them go to Glacier Bay. Um, maybe even all of Holland America's do. I know that most of Princess's do, but they have a few that don't. And then uh, Norwegian is able to go to Glacier Bay a little bit. So you have to have a permit to go there. Um, the cruise ship does, the cruise line does, and Holland America and Princess have far and away the most. Norwegian has a few, so they will have some sailings that go there. Celebrity and Royal Caribbean no longer go to Glacier Bay, so that is not going to even be on any of their itineraries. The same with Carnival. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your planning. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure you knew that. So back to Holland America. So I want to just cover the main um, topics that people, I think, ask about the most. And so after I have been through all of this, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I am happy to answer. And if there are things that I clearly left out, I will include them in another video. But um, just come along with me, and I will tell you about my experience. I thoroughly enjoyed my cruise on Holland America. I would do it again in a heartbeat, and I will do it again um, on another time that I want to go to Alaska. Absolutely. That's how good it was. So first of all, um, embarkation. That's what you do first. And Gordon got my video up this morning showing um, kind of my um, like the hotel and getting um, ready to go to the hotel I'm sorry to the port so you can see that and then I just took a taxi over to the port it worked out just fine everything went really smoothly I just stayed at a hotel if you've not seen that I stayed at a hotel not far from the Vancouver Airport but take a look at that video for more detailed information I would say that the main things that you need to know about embarkation is first of all um, Holland America does use the Verifly app. It is optional, but by all means, do the Verifly app. It is so simple. And you know what? By the time that you have done the Arrive Can app that is required to go to Canada, whether you're going just on a cruise or if you're departing from Vancouver, uh, doing the Verifly app is really simple. It's very similar. So the Verifly app, you basically just upload um, your passport, your vaccination um, information, and your negative COVID test. It is really slick. It is not hard at all. And when you get to embarkation, there is actually a line for people who have the Verifly app. And it is so much shorter than it is for all the people who don't have the Verifly app. So definitely do that. The other thing is, is make sure that you print out um, a copy of your boarding pass. And you can do that um, under check-in on the website. That is really handy. They look at it multiple times. The first lady checks it and makes a mark on it. And then after that, they want to see it with the mark on it. And so definitely print that out and have it with you. You have to go through a few steps on um, the Navigator app that is Holland America's app. So definitely do that. There's a few steps to go through for check-in. None of it is hard. And then have your passport out as well. They do scan 
scan your passport during the embarkation process, but it went really slick. It was really quick getting on. It, and, and, and all the comments that I have read and looking at other Facebook groups and things, it seems like everybody was on pretty quick, especially if they had done the Verify app, and it doesn't matter what time you got there. So um, just do the Verify app. It makes things easier. And I want to make sure that everybody is really clear to know really the two requirements. If you're going to sail to Alaska this year, first of all, you need to do a COVID test and it needs to be done within two days for an antigen test or 72 hours for a PCR test. That is the requirement. And then you have to, of course, be vaccinated or else have an exemption. And then you also need to um, do the Arrive Can app within 72 hours of arriving in Canada. So if you are departing, for example, out of Seattle, they are also asking you to do um, the Arrive Can app within 72 hours of embarkation. If you are on a cruise, that calls at like on our cruise let me tell you how that worked so I had to do it to arrive in Canada and I just made sure I did it within 72 hours to board the ship also so one time was good for that but then since we returned to Vancouver we had to do it again and just to heads up on that when I was doing it um, to come back you have to do it within 72 hours of coming back and in the video I showed that they hand out a paper you have to write the receipt code on there after you do it and so um, when I was doing it though it wanted to know your embarkation day but it didn't have mine as an option so I just checked what the option was and then I selected the day we would be going back and then all you do is submit it and you get a code again. It's really easy at that point because you don't have to enter any more information other than select dates. And so that's how that worked. We had to do it again. I wrote it on the paper, slid it in the box. There's a box up by customer service that just says arrive can receipt. You just slide it in there and I didn't hear anything about it again. I wasn't asked for it at disembarkation, nothing. So, and then when you do disembark, I should say all you have to do is have your, um, they give you a customs form to fill out. That's all they ask for. You don't even have to have your passport out. So you just have that customs form, pick up your luggage, or if you bring your luggage with you, you just head out, hand them the form, and you're on your way. So I just wanted to let you know that it was so simple. So that is everything really, I think, to do with embarkation. It, like I said, it went so smoothly. Now, the next thing that I wanted to um, talk to you about is the main things that I have really considered that people really want to know about is like kind of what the different vibe is, like what the sale, like the feeling is. Is. I would say that Holland America is definitely a lot quieter. I have never really thought that Princess was necessarily noisy, <laughs> but um, Holland America is definitely very quiet. The only time that it, I would say that it's not really quiet is if you've got kids in the swimming pool. Um, and then, of course, if you're in the rock and roll rock room, that's, you know, where the BB King listening to loud music. Um, other than that, it is a very quiet ship. It is so quiet. People are just very quiet. Um, and there were lots of children on the ship, and I only really heard them um, every once in a while. You know, they went tearing through somewhere, as you expect children to do. But as a general rule, they were mostly in the pool. I know that a lot of them were up at Club Hal because they really, I think they enjoyed it. One evening I was up there, and... Um, just as right by, is it right by Tamarind? I can't remember. But anyway, it's right handy to something else I was going to. And I heard the kiddos, the parents were picking them up and they were going to go eat dinner. And I heard the, kid, the kids wanted to stay. <laughs> and the moms were like, come and eat with us and then we'll take you back. So all of the things that I saw, I think the children and even teenagers really enjoyed all the activities that they had there. I saw a lot of teenagers doing things together, scavenger hunts, other fun things. And so I think it is a really good cruise line to go on for that, especially if you've got like a multi-generational family they talk about it's a really good cruise line to have something to do for everyone i think they really go out of the way to entertain entertain the children when they have them on and then of course they've got good entertainment for the adults so that's um, what i think about that um so it was very quiet and they do close down a whole lot earlier so on the first um night that um the embarkation day i wanted you know me i wanted a diet coke at about 10 30 and i couldn't find anywhere to get one and so i went to like all the bars and looked and the only bar I missed was the casino bar so I didn't think to go in there so the next day when I um, was getting a drink I said so where is open late or how do you guys do that and the, the guy said go to the casino bar it's usually open late and so just be aware 
that things are going to close down a whole lot earlier, and um, which is okay. It's not bad at all. It's just um, how they run it. So be aware of that. If you want to drink, get it earlier. Some people that um, I had met mentioned how they got out of the late show. They had gone to um, the dance show. Um, in step or something. Anyway, they had gone to the late. I'd gone to the earlier, like at 7.30, and they had gone to the 9.30, and um, they wanted to get a drink and couldn't find somewhere to get one. And so just kind of keep that in mind, and I surely did tell them about the casino bar. But that's just the other thing to keep in mind. Those are two things that really stood out to me, is just how quiet everything is and how uh, much earlier everything um, just really shuts down there. So the other things that I wanted to make sure that you know about, let me tell you a little bit. So, you know, people always ask, about room stewards. My room stewards, there are two. You get assigned two on Holland America, and I don't know if it's always like that or if they are training some. Like mine was clearly um, a gentleman that had been there longer, and then a young man that maybe he was new. Um, so um, I don't know. But anyway, they did a really nice job of taking good care of my room, keeping it clean. I honestly didn't see very much of them. So then the next thing that I want to let everybody know about is the dining. The dining is really good on Holland America. I think that I expected um, something to be even better perhaps than it was in some places. If um, the main dining room food is just fine, the only thing I have to compare it to is princesses. It is definitely not better than princesses. And the only thing is, is I think Holland America could work on their desserts. And so not comparing it to anyone else, but their desserts were not remarkable. And so, um, but their dining was very good. The people in the dining room were very um, attentive. They were very nice. I think that they probably are having a little bit of crew shortage problem because the wait time was a long time. But I would say that it probably is due to staffing shortages. Now, um, I'm just going to list off the different places that they have to eat with a quick note, and then I'll do another video really in depth about dining. But I just wanted to give you a feel for it. So included with your cruise fare, you've got um, the Dive In Burger Place, um, the New York Deli for pizzas, salads, and then they serve, I think, hot dogs and pretzels with mustard on it, and then the main dining room and the buffet that they call the Lido Marketplace, and so there is lots of options to choose from if you don't want to pay for specialty dining. It, like, there is so much to choose from, and it is really um, a wide variety of things, and so you're not going to go hungry, and I think you're going to have really good things to eat. And they do have a variety of um, dishes in each place so that you won't get tired of the same thing, okay? So that's what's included. And then as far as specialty dining grows, they've got the Pinnacle Grill, which is basically your steakhouse, Tamarind, which is an Asian food restaurant, Canaletto, and then that's Italian, and Rudy Saldemar, which is... Um, French bistro style food. And so I ate in the Pinnacle grill, grill for lunch and for dinner. And I ate in Tamarind for dinner. I didn't try Canaletto. I need to do that next time we go. And same with Rudy Saldemar. So, um, that's that's all of their specialty dining. I would say if you're trying to choose, the um, Pinnacle Grill is $15 extra charge for lunch, and it's $34.20, I believe, is the charge for dinner. And uh, you know what? I really enjoyed lunch there. I got the Alaskan King Salmon. It was absolutely perfect. It was wonderful and just excellent, actually. And then um, the service was so much quicker than in the evening. Um, so if you want to have a really long dinner, um, definitely go in the evening. If you're thinking that there, you want to hit a show for sure, you don't want to miss anything else, um, you might want to do lunch instead because it was excellent. And you can get um, very much the similar similar things to choose from at lunchtime. And so I will put those other menus up though so that you can really compare what you would like. And then tamarind was just out of this world. It was excellent, excellent, excellent. And I really do like Asian food, so I've eaten a lot of it. And it was really, really good. It was excellent. So I would highly recommend that as well. So if you are a foodie kind of person who likes to um, try a lot of different things when you go on a cruise line, this, I think, would be an excellent cruise line for you. The food was excellent. There is a large variety of the specialty dining as well as the in dining that's included. So I can highly recommend that to you. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you about here is, um, let's see. The 
entertainment. So the entertainment as far as it goes, so Holland America has what they call the world stage and it is a huge, um, it's their auditorium with um, seating that goes like around like this and then they've got these big LED screens that are huge, just huge that go all the way around. And so it is phenomenal to go to any kind of event there. I went to one all about um, the world cruises because I think that sounds fabulous. So I went to a thing about that and it was fun to see it on those big screens as well. But they also have their Origins show. I loved that. They have the BBC Earth where they have the um, photos up on the screen and then the musicians are playing music to go with it live. They've got um, a music uh, dance one that was beautiful and humanity. And so they are all really fabulous to go to there. And so they they were all on different days, of course, and so that you could see them, you know, on the day that they were offered. Some of them were just offered once a day and some of them were offered twice a day. I think it just depends on how many people they thought maybe would be coming. So that is as far as um, that entertainment there at the world stage. It was very, very good. They have um, also the New York, the Lincoln Center stage, which you have the musicians come and play beautiful classical music. It was really nice. And one day they even played, um, they did their adaptation on some rock and roll songs. Like they played Queen. They played, um, I'm trying to remember what else they played, but it was really fun to hear, but it was beautiful at the same time. So um Anyway, um, so that is a really nice option, and that usually has two shows a day. And then there's BB King's, there's a few days, a couple of days maybe that there was no Lincoln Center stage, and then there's the BB King's music, which is in the same place as the Lincoln Center stages. They just changed the sign, and that is phenomenal. Um, they play really beautiful music. Um, when we were there, most of the time a lady was singing, people danced, um, it was lots of fun there. And then they also have their Rolling Stones rock and roll room where they have you know like a rock band and a singer and there's um singing and there's a dance floor there too and that was really fun they played a lot of music that i recognized so i think that they um I think that they do a really good job of doing different decades of music as well as some newer stuff and so that was fun and then they also have the billboard area where there are the pianos and so sometimes it's two pianists playing two pianos and some of the time it was one pianist playing and sometimes they had a set program sometimes they just took requests that was really thoroughble, thoroughly enjoyable as well and so they have a lot in the way of entertainment and I thoroughly enjoyed it I tried to go to all of it so that I could tell you all about it and I like I wanted to see what it was anyway and there wasn't anything that I didn't like um, if I had to complain about one thing it would be that the couple a uh, couple of times I went to the BB Kings and the loud it was just turned up so so loud and I like loud music so um, it was really 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 loud that would be my only complaint but a lot of people were sitting there um, just soaking it in and so that's good and people were dancing I just um, I got to a point that my ears actually hurt so I had to go but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it though it was really really good that would be the only thing out of all of that that I could complain about so the entertainment is very good those are the main um, entertainment venues that they have as far as like other activities on the ship I would say they had a little bit of trivia they had um, a couple of fun things like Simon Says a few things like that they had like the spa things and the jewelry sales that we're used to seeing um, on cruises. They had a lot of that, of course. Um, our, the naturalist, we had a naturalist on board because it was to Alaska. He did a couple of presentations talking about wildlife and things like that. And then he really had a lot of time that he was out on the open decks. They would just list it in the program so that you knew um, where, you know, when he would be out there. And he did a really good job of saying, you know, here's where we usually see this and everybody would look and if somebody we saw a whale, we'd all be excited and look at it together. Just that kind of thing. So he did a really good job, though. I have, um, he really did a good job. There wasn't a lot of other enrichment lectures, which did surprise me a little bit. But honestly, I would say, truthfully, when you are in Alaska, there is so much to see outside. So much beautiful scenery. So, so much wildlife to look for. All of this that you're not bored. I never had a minute that I thought, oh, wish I could go listen to someone speak about something. Not at all. Um, when you're in port, you're busy seeing everything there. And when you're on the ship, most of the time there is something to see out um, um, out 
<laughs> there's a little bit of time that you're only on the ocean or maybe it's a little bit foggy, but there's plenty to do on the ship. And so don't think that you're going to go on Holland America and be bored. So just be aware if you are looking for a party ship, Holland America is not for you. If you are looking for your water slides and, um, you know, your racetrack and your ice skating rink and all of that, Holland America is not for you as well. And I just say that for you so that, like, always do research before you go on a cruise so that you know what you're getting into. But that's why I'm telling you all of this. So hopefully it'll help you decide if you would like to go on Holland America or not. So um, let's see. That's um, pretty much about the entertainment. Um... Let's see, then I wanna to talk to you about the excursions. So they had really, 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 really good excursions available. Honestly, I would say they had all of the excursions that I have seen offered on my previous cruises, plus some that I have not seen offered before. So even just for that, it is worth sailing on Holland America to Alaska. If you like to go see things when you are in port and you wanna see things you have never seen before, even if you've been 25 times on other cruise lines, you need to go on Holland America. It is that good what they're offering on the excursions. So let me tell you really quick about mine and then Gordon's gonna put the videos up to kind of show you um, some of the footage I, t I took and then you can ask questions as well. So the one I did out of Juno is called Tracy Arm Fjord and Glacier Explorer. So when you're looking for it, that's the title. It was about six hours long and it was so cool. They came, the ship went down to where they could, um, the expedition ship, the exploration ship, what do they call that? It was kind of a catamaran. They came and picked us up and right at the ship, they pulled up alongside. You could feel the ship slamming on her brakes. They never stop. The ships don't ever stop, but they slowed way down and then the boat came up and they just took that gangway up and you got to walk down like I said, I was trying to video for you without wiping out. Um, so I have to look back and see exactly what I got. But you just got right on the boat and it's the kind that has like the interior part of the, um, the cabin so you can sit down if you want to be inside or be outside. They took us up Tracy Arm Fjord, got to see the South Sawyer Glacier, we got so close, right up to that glacier. It was fantastic. They even got a piece of glacier ice so that um, they were selling drinks. They were really cheap. I got um, a glass with a big chunk of glacier ice in it um, with a Diet Coke, a can of Diet Coke to pour over it. 250. They didn't even charge extra because it's glacier ice. To me, that is so cool. But anyway, had an extraordinary day. Extraordinary. And that is that excursion when Gordon and I went last August um, was offered actually on Princess, just to tell you, but it is not offered this year and we couldn't find it available to pick up otherwise. And so when we looked at the dates that it was available, they were all booked up. And so I think that they're doing it for Holland America and it was extraordinary. Like, go do that. You have to go do that. It was so beautiful. So the next thing, and I'll go into more detail when I do those, but I, y'all need to know just you have to go on Holland America. Then um, in Skagway, I went on the Glacier Point Wilderness Safari you know what? That one I have never seen offered anywhere else before. They take you on um, a boat out to a place called Glacier Point. You can look for it on the map. It goes past Haines and up and around a little bit. And then you get off and then you walk up the beach and they take you and they put you on a school bus kind of thing. They take you into where they outfit you with your rubber boots and your paddle. Then they walk you through this glorious forest that has all of these trees that like the glacier used to be there. So beautiful, so beautiful until you get over to the river. Then you get in your, like, I think it was a 31 foot Voyager canoe, they called it. It had a little engine on the back and you go up the river to the Davidson Glacier. If it had not been so warm while we were there, we could have walked up and touched it, but it was like, it was in the 80s, you guys. So the water coming down the glacier hadn't been coming down like that two days ago, the guide told us. So there was too much water coming off, so we couldn't walk up. But I got the most wonderful rocks, the best photos, and was that close to a glacier. It was phenomenal. Like, go, just to go on that. If you can walk through the woods for a while, and it is up and down a little bit, it's not strenuous, but it is up and down a little bit um, you can do that and it was just I had one of the best days ever so you, that is worth right there that day was worth going on a cruise on Holland America to Alaska then the last thing um, that I went on was in Ketchikan and it's called the Wilderness Exploration Cruise and Crab Fest at the George Inlet Lodge 
that was another really good excursion. I was so pleased. They um, took us out. They picked us up on the bus, took us out to close to George Inlet. It was about maybe a 20 minute um, bus ride. And then they took us to the lodge there, put us on a smaller boat and took us up clear into George Inlet. We got to see crabs, um, beautiful scenery. They threw fish in the water so that the eagle would swoop down and pick it up. So we got to see bald eagles up close. It was phenomenal. And then they took us back to the lodge and fed us Dungeness crab that was caught within 30 miles of the lodge there fresh that morning. It was so good. And they were very generous with the crab. It wasn't like they just gave you a little bit. <laughs> They like, I was so full by the time I was done. And then they give you a piece of uh, cheesecake with this blueberry topping. Oh my goodness, so good. It was absolutely out of this world. The people there were so nice. Um, the whole staff was wonderful. The guy who was our guide on the boat was outstanding. I can't recommend that um, highly enough. And so truly, if you've not been to Alaska on Holland America, you need to go on Holland America. Even if it's a little quieter than you want, if you like to get out and see things and see places you've not seen before, you should go on Holland America, okay? And you'll have a great cruise anyway. There's lots of entertainment, lots of great food. It'll be good. So let's see. Then the last thing is the layout of the ship. So they have um, like a little central area there that reaches, that extends from um, deck one, where the shore excursion desk is, up through deck two to deck three. Deck three is where the uh, customer service is, and there on deck two is where you're going to see like the Dutch Cafe is right there. Oh, I forgot to mention the Dutch Cafe. So the Dutch Cafe, go eat there. Like try the ham and cheese sandwich. Um, they've got really good split pea soup. That is wonderful. Um, they've got lots of really good food. Just go eat there, and they've got yummy treats. And so there's that. Then there's the Pinnacle Grill right there um, and a bar right over um, just down from the... Uh, Dutch Cafe. And then, like I said, so that's kind of open. It kind of has a silver metal thing around um, deck three. But um, so there's that. And then everything kind of goes down from there that you've got like one direction, you'll have like the photo area and um, the or Club Orange um, is down a direction from that. And then the other way is where your, a lot of your entertainment is on both levels. And so it's really handy to go. That's where all the shops are. So that is really nice. They've got two pools. They've got one that is more midship that is on deck nine and ten, not deck nine, and then ten is the upper level. But that is where the screen is to be able to watch a movie when they run movie nights. And it is, um, it's not a huge, huge screen. It's not little by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not um, an enormous screen, but you could see it just fine. And um, so that's where that is. And that pool has the top that is retractable. So sometimes, um, I feel like I saw it all the way closed once. When we were in Vancouver, it was open all the way, but they didn't really open it all the way, even when we were in port on days that it was really hot. So I don't know what that was about. Maybe it's hard to open and close, I don't know. But it occurred to me that it would be really handy to have as a covered pool when you're sailing somewhere that um, is cold. But, um, and then they have an aft pool as well with seating areas on both sides of it. And it was um, nice as well. And of course it wasn't covered. I, um, so that was very nice. That was really nice. And right by that aft pool, sorry, the middle mid midship pool there, they've got lots of seating on the level with it and above. They've got, that's right where the dive in hamburger place is. It's right where the New York deli place is. So um, it's a really nice area there. Really handy to get good food, really handy to sit by the pool and just enjoy yourself. And they have some lounge chairs, not that many, but they have some lounge chairs and then they've got lots of chairs and tables. And then um, they've got sofas just to lounge on and big chairs. So it's very nice. Let's see. Um, let's see. What else have I got here? Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to let you know is if you are someone that really enjoys wine, I think you will really enjoy and trying different um, wines, different um, alcohol beverages because they have lots of tasting events. They've got lots of wine. They even have one where you go blend your own wine and then you end up with a bottle of wine you can drink wherever you want on the ship. They've got that. And those are all at an extra charge. 
So be aware of that. And if you buy the Have It All package, it doesn't include those. So just to be aware of that. But they had so many different events like that, that I think if you're someone that enjoys that, that is another really good reason to sail on Holland America, because they really um, specialize in um, all these different kinds of wine, all these different things to try. And I think that you would really enjoy that as well. And then finally, I just wanted to tell you really quick, the Have It All package includes, um, oh, I think I left my paper on my desk. So the Have It All package includes your um, $100 towards an excursion if you're sailing for six to nine days. I'll tell you six to nine days first. So if you're sailing um, for six to nine days, it includes a $100 credit towards an excursion. It includes your um, the, premium be the premier beverage package that Holland America has, and then it also includes the Wi-Fi. Now, if you are going on a sailing that is from 10 to 20 days, that includes, um, oh sorry, and a specialty dining, one specialty dining, then um, goes with your six to nine day cruises. If you're going from 10 to 20 days, then you get to have $200 towards an excursion, you get two specialty dinings, and you still get the free Wi-Fi, and it's just their basic plan. And then if you're going on 21 days plus, you get to have $300 towards a shore excursion or shore excursions, and then you also get to have um, the beverage package, three specialty dinings, and the Wi-Fi. So I just wanted to let you know what's included with the Holland America's Have It All package. Um, they do, um, they don't include the gratuities. Um, heads up about that, the gratuities you have to pay separate. And if you are in a suite, it is $17 a day are the gratuities. And if you are in any other kind of cabin that's not a suite, then they are $15.50 a day is how much the gratuities are. So I just wanted to bring everybody up to date on that as you kind of thinking of your pricing and everything that goes with it. So if you are somebody that really wants to have it all, um, of course, I don't know what Holland America is going to run, but if you are flexible on when you're going to book your cruise, I don't know. Hopefully, at some point, they'll have um, a promo that includes the have it all. So right now, they don't, but um, that's just my best. <laughs> that's my best idea on that. And so I think that that is um, mostly what I wanted to tell you about. This year is the 75th year. Holland America is celebrating 75 years of sailing to Alaska. So they indeed have been doing it for a long time, and they clearly know what they're doing. Uh, the other thing I forgot to tell you is they open the bow of the ship. It's an open bow there and you can go out there in Glacier Bay. So you are much lower to the water. It's on deck five. You're close to the water out there right in the front. And the day we were there, it was so warm and sunny. It was just beautiful. But it gives you a really fun vantage point to see the glaciers as well. And so I would say that combining that experience with the shore excursions that are offered and then the fun difference in the entertainment is different than I've had on other cruise ships. I think that sailing to Holland to Alaska on Holland America is a great idea. Like I highly recommend it. Like I said, we're going to have to do it again. Gordon has to go see this this way. And so we are definitely going to do Holland America to Alaska again more than once, I am sure. So I just wanted to let you know that I wanted to tell you if when I was comparing Holland America to Princess, if I sounded like I didn't like Holland America, shame on me because I apologize if I sounded like that. I love Holland America. There's um, there are different but that's okay and that's really good because people want different things at different times when they go. Sometimes the same person wants different things just for different trips and so I just wanted to let you know like I said put your questions below and we will go from there but I've got lots more to tell you about but I thought I wanted to first give you a big overview. Do watch our channel for the next little bit as we are going to be putting up I think for the foreseeable future more than one video a day. We need to get caught up on our Mediterranean videos. We've got to get everything out that I've got about um, Holland America and Alaska, as well as we've got lots to talk about what's going on in cruising otherwise, because there's a lot going on right now that we need to talk about. So keep your eye out for more videos. If you just see one, look for another one and see if we put up another one um, that day as well, if you wouldn't mind. Um, it helps us out, and I also don't want to miss have you miss anything that would be valuable to you. So thank you so very much for listening. If you appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up and for sure subscribe if you haven't already. We love having you all here with us. I will be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.